Molokai to Oahu race. It's 32 miles through the Kaibi Channel. And it was by far the hardest race I've ever done. My body was just pushed to its limit. Bah. Right. The ocean has given me so much. is my greatest provider. I can't imagine my life without the ocean. I would go absolutely nuts. So today, we're going on the OC1s, and I'm gonna go ride with Kai Bartlett, who is Probably the best canoe paddler on Maui and even in the entire Hawaii state. I've won the Kaivi OC1 um, championships uh, five times. I feel blessed to be able to accomplish that. Anytime you can paddle with someone like him is uh, kind of an honor because he is a master at what he does. With canoeing in Hawaii, it's a big part of the culture, you know, and you can venture between channels, island to island, and so it's, you know, it's a good feeling. It's kind of like you're perpetuating something a little bit. This is where, you know, it all began. The canoe is the tool that got the Hawaiians to Hawaii. The coolest thing about paddling in general is the fact that you can do it in all conditions. You can do it in waves, you can do it in wind, and you can do it in flat water. And paddling, to me, I think has really helped me become a more complete athlete. You know, I think the more you get into the outrigger and learn their technique, the more it can translate into a successful stand-up paddler. Every time I paddle this thing, I feel more confident once I get on my stand-up because you see it, the ocean from a different perspective. You know, now that he's really getting a stand-up, it'd be fun to get him out on the one man more. I tell you what, it'd actually be fun to start training with him some more, too, because you, know, you train with guys that are hungry at it, it always makes you feel younger, you know? Push, pushes, pushes the limit a little more, you know? It was an experience to go with a master like him, and I can't wait to go with him again because he is just, above all, an awesome person to be around. Molokai to Oahu. This race is probably the most prestigious race in paddleboarding and stand-up paddling. It's 32 miles through the Kaivi Channel, which means Channel of Bones. You start off with like 200 people. You go out into this channel and all of a sudden you're alone. How are the conditions out here today? Very nice. I wish I was out there myself, man. You know, most races are all coastal races, so you have the land to play off of or the channel. It's a lot of mixed up water, but that's what makes it fun. It's like putting the puzzle together. This year, I didn't have an unlimited board, so I entered in the 14 class, which is a 14-foot board, no rudder. With an unlimited board, you can glide a little further and you have that rudder to help you. I felt like I had to earn it this year on my 14. What makes the Molokai to Oahu Channel so difficult, it's not really paddling 32 miles. It's just the conditions you have to go through. You have cross chop coming from south, north, west, east, and it's just kind of a washing machine out there. On a board with a set fin, you're having to do a lot of fancy footwork. I mean, you're, you're busting the Michael Jackson all over that thing. You're always working to do something. You're not just able to kick a tiller and go. The guys that had a rudder, the only two guys in front of them, those guys should be stoked he didn't have a rudder on his board. The last bit of the race is just torture because the finish line is like straight up win. These conditions are just no fun at all. It's like basically paddling into a brick wall every stroke. It was by far the hardest race I've ever done. My body was just pushed to its limit. The chains don't trickle down. As soon as I crossed the line, my like eyes were you know darkening, and I was like about to pass out. It's going down like this. I drove one hour to Hawaii, Kai, and he's not even talking to me. He's got his back to me. What a punk! That was gnarly. Paddle 30 miles and it's good, and then the last two was like torture. 
I was really satisfied with the accomplishment of crossing from Molokai to Oahu, and I may have gone first in my division. Didn't get first overall, but that's the next step. You like these Oahu offshores, huh? Maui, we have side shore. Here, everything's offshore. That is that. It's good for surf, but not for having a stock board. It was the first to go. <laughs> So today we're here on the south shore of Maui and uh, there's a little south swell running. Absolutely perfect for riding the four-man outrigger canoe. Kai has purchased the four-man surfing canoe and I was lucky enough to have the Lenny family invite me out to uh, go out there and have some fun out at Thousand Peaks and do some canoe surfing with everybody. Today we have my dad, my younger brother, my team manager, Mickey Schweiger, and then we had uh, Locke Eggers, who's a canoe paddler. I think if I went back in ancient times, they would probably give you an island, but probably give yeah. you an island for a bunch of straps. <laughs> When the Hawaiians got here 2,000 years ago or so, the canoe was the first man-made vessel ever to touch the beach here in Hawaii. This is the first evolution of surfing right here. This is the roots of uh, what we do today with stand-up paddling and everything. The difference between these canoes versus the ancient Hawaiian canoes is these surf a lot better. Like, it's kind of been modernized by, you know, the materials you can use to make the canoe stronger, lighter, more durable, but it'll always remain having all your best friends or family on the boat with you. That'll never change. When you don't steer right or the wave kind of does something that you're not anticipating, you just kind of get flung over the side and uh, we call it hooliing. When you do eat it in the canoe, you want to try to stay close to the canoe because once you start getting away from the canoe, there's more of a chance of the canoe swinging and hitting you. So trying to stay with the canoe as much as possible. If you hooli, everybody ends up in the water with no exceptions. Flipping over, hooling is, is something that just naturally happens. And I guess if it doesn't happen, then you haven't tried hard enough. With the canoe, it's one of the only ways where you can share that experience. And I think that's what's fascinating for me. Before ancient Hawaiians had surf wars, they had canoes. And that was their mode of transportation. So you know that they caught waves and stuff on it. And that's the best way to share a wave, really, is to have everyone on one canoe dropping in on a bomb. <laughs> We're here at the Battle of Paddle in California with all the best paddlers in the world. So gotta make this one count. <laughs>